thought because many of the our Salafi brethren uh, have an inclination to the Hanbali school or describe this as Hanbali. What do some of the Hanbali scholars say? And then you can compare it with what they're saying in Hanbali school and see what's happening there. We mentioned it before in passing as well, uh, in brief, but Imam Ahmed's shirt. A bidah when the high and of Imam Ahmed Al Bayhaqi reports from Al Ravi that Shafi's sent me, there's a typo there, sent me with a letter to Egypt, from Egypt to Ahmed bin Hanbal. He, Ahmed, removed his shirt, which was in contact. So after, it's a longer incident, Imam Ahmed read the letter, and he, Ahmed, removed his shirt, which was in contact with his body, and gave it to me. So Imam Shafi uh, is the teacher of Imam Ahmed. Ahmed is the student of Imam Shafi, by the way. When I returned back to Shafi, I informed him of this. And he said, so Imam Shafi said, wet it, meaning wet it, the shirt with water and give it to me so I can make tabarruk with it. And another version of it, I would see him, Imam Shafi, every day take from it, meaning the water from the shirt, and wipe his face seeking blessings from Ahmed bin Hanbal. Imam al-Safariri says, this story has been narrated by a number of roots. So he said it's an authentic narration. <coughs> Many people narrate this. So Imam Shafi'i would, would seek blessings from the shirt of Imam Ahmed, his student, because he was a great, great scholar. Tabarak with Jubba, Ibn Mufli says in Al-Adab, al maruzi said in his Kitab al warat I had Abu Abdullah say, says Imam Ahmed, his kunya is Abu Abdullah, Yahya bin Yahya left his Jubba for me, and his son came to me with it. I said, a best man who worshipped Allah in it, I will seek blessings from it. That's what Imam Ahmed said when it, for this Jubba was given to him. And also his son, Imam Ahmed's son, said that I had a shirt of my father and there was a fire in our house. And when the fire was raging, I, the thing I was thinking about was the shirt. And when the fire was put out, I went into the house and I found that the whole house had been burnt down except for where the shirt was. And around the shirt, it was protected. Okay, and so that's one that, you know, he saw that, that was one of the blessings of his father's shirt. So that's mentioned in historical sources, which is not denied. Uh, treatment via a grave. So be careful with this one, because it's open to, um, open to misinterpretation. Hafiz Diyadil al-Maqtasi in Hakayat al-Mathura, Hafiz Abdul al-Ghani al-Maqtasi. And these are great Hanbali scholars that the Salafi school love and respect. They said, there appeared on my upper arm something resembling a boil. It would, it would heal and then reappear. And this went on for, for a long time. I traveled to Isfahan and then returned to Baghdad with it, meaning the boil. It's something which had uh, pus in it as well, which is causing him like, discomfort. I, I went to the grave of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, God be pleased with him, and wiped it on the grave. I found that I was then healed and it did not reappear. But this is what a great scholar is doing from uh, Sunni Islam, from the Hanbali school. Tabarak via pen, I don't know quite how this works. People who know about agriculture might be able to help with this one. And this is Manaqib of Ahmed of Ibn al-Jawzi. So these are humbly scholars, what they're mentioning. The scribe of Imam Ahmed, Abu Talib Ali bin Ahmed's pen broke and Imam Ahmed gave him a pen. The scribe took the pen to Abu Ali al-Ja'fari who was overjoyed and gave it to his servant saying, take this pen and insert it into a tree or a pod or something, a, a date palm pod. So perhaps it may germinate. He inserted it into a tree or a pod, as it were, and the tree germinated. So they were, they were happy to get the pen of Imam Ahmed and they went out and tried to, I don't know, multiply that. So this is mentioned in the historical sources. So how that exactly works, I'm not sure, but that's what they were doing with the pen of Imam Ahmed. Uh, Common People to Barruk, Tadkir al-Hafad and other books, Hafid uh, Abdul Ghani Maqdasi, once again, a great scholar that Salafi school respect. The R said we were in Egypt when he reached. When he went out for Juma, we were able to walk with him due to the amount of people who were seeking blessings from him and gathering around him. That's what is mentioned about him, this humbly scholar. A gifting shirt, the Tabakat al Hanabila. The Al Maqdis, he said, I had Abu Musa also rate from a man from Dimyat who said, We were one day with Hafiz, and I said to myself, I said, I said in myself, Remember, he doesn't say this out loud. I said to myself, I wish that Hafiz would give me his garment touching his body so that I could be shrouded in it. When I wished to leave, he said, do not leave. When people had left, he removed his garment, which was in contact with his body and gave it to me. He said, 
the garment remains with us and anyone so that's what he said and then this person who took the garment he said he said the garment remains with us and anyone who falls ill and has a headache we place it on him until they are better with the permission of Allah Ta'ala so this is what the humble scholars were doing Having gone to put it with handwriting that's what the humble were up to or well, these type of humble at least Manakib of Sheikh Abu Umar al Maktasi of the Al Maktasi. I heard the pious worshipping Sheikh, the one whose dua is accepted. Nasr bin Suleiman says, Sheikh Abu Umar wrote two letters to me. I found that any place of illness which I placed them on would heal with the permission of Allah Ta'ala. So, this is a great scholar, just his, let, his handwriting, this person was finding was the blessing from his handwriting, Allah Ta'ala. Was causing so he places the handwriting on a particular place which is hurting and that Allah Ta'ala would remove the pain from that area and I heard Ahmed bin Bilal al say I have not seen the like of the writing of Sheikh Abu Umar from the time I wore it on myself that fever left me so he had a fever and when he would place it on his body that fever would leave that's what he found Allah Ta'ala was causing that to happen So that's just some examples. Obviously, these are pious people. There's other people now, they might write pages and pages of Taweez and it has zero impact. Why? Because that person's spiritual state is not like these people. They can just write a letter just talking, just like a general message about something, and it has such an impact because of the blessings of that person. Whereas other people, they might read, like, you know, they might do dumb, as they say. Read and read and read and read, it has zero impact. Why? As I mentioned before in passing, you know, there's people who witnessed this, somebody might say Bismillah and blow into a cup and it smashes. And people actually saw that and, and some people actually preserved the cup as well. Because they wanted to ask them like, what's this, why are you just say Bismillah for? What is that going to do? And they said, okay, you watch. And they did it and the, the cup exploded. The other person might recite Bismillah all day long and blow into a cup and nothing happens. Why? There's different people, their spiritual state is different. That's what you have to be very careful of. When you this Tabarak with the pious is about, you know, real God-fearing people. Not just anybody. And you're going to find out for yourself. Some people have no impact, unfortunately. Uh, and then this is just, a, what does the Hanbali Fit book state about burial in the place of the pious? About Tabarruk. al mukri which is a Hanbali Fit book section, it is desirable to be buried in a cemetery in which there are numerous pious people and martyrs in order to obtain blessings, their, in order to obtain their blessings, barakah. So it's good to be buried in where other pious people are so their blessings impact on you that Allah Ta'ala has mercy on you not that their, their grave is emitting something that seeps over to you Allah Ta'ala is the one who is descending the blessings but the, but the burial near the pious people is a cause for the happening and this is an interesting point in the Hanbali Fit books leaving food for blessings Dalil Talib which is a Fit book it says Make dua for the host, so this is the adab of being a guest. Leave some food, not least if they are those whom Baraka is sought with their leftovers. So if, you're, if, if there's a pious scholar goes somewhere, he's saying, leave, eat the food and leave something on your plate so the, the host can eat from your food for blessings. That's what is mentioned in the humbly books. Okay, so that's just an overview, quick overview. We've gone for about an hour. So that's just a quick overview. <coughs> Just to give you an uh, insight into this issue of Barakah. So the Barakah with the Prophet وسلم, If you can find a relic which is authentic, you can take blessings from that relic. You can go to places that are linked to the Prophet وسلم, and pray there. As we saw, Abdullah ibn Umar, just remember that narration. He would, he would water a tree, he would go out and, and pray in those places. The companions inviting the Prophet وسلم, to pray in their house so they could pray there. Take it as a place of prayer. That's all evidence for going out to visit these places linked to the Prophet وسلم, and praying there if somebody said it's innovation then they're following a minority view they're not worrying, following the majority Sunni view okay and then obviously with the pious is a, obviously it's very nuanced you have to be a real pious person and then just limit yourself to the examples given and obviously it's open to abuse as well for unscrupulous uh, people who are corrupt um, uh, who, who try to take advantage of this ruling as well. So you have to be very careful on the second one as well. But just to point that out as well. And as you mentioned about the adab of visiting the Prophet وسلم, we don't kiss the grave, we don't touch the grave, we don't touch graves generally. But we don't label those people either. Obviously you don't want to ex 
mention that ruling too much as well because then people it opens the door to them as well because now i was watching you know on youtube some people going to a mazar and then their wedding clothes they were putting on the mazar rubbing on the grave and then taking it and i don't know it's it opens the door sometimes which it can get complicated it can get complicated and there's all sorts i mean anyway i don't know if that's a common custom or not but i mean going there making dua which is fine but now taking your headpiece off and then putting it on the grave and taking it on, putting it back on, and uh, etc. So that second point about the awliya, it's, 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 it does exist. Blessing does exist from the scholars without a shadow of a doubt, but obviously within limits as well. Okay, so that will pause there, inshallah. And then on Friday, God willing, we just talk about visiting the, the, the grave of the Prophet وسلم, with, as a journey. And then we just talk about visiting holy sites as well. Inshallah, if we have time. Uh, and it, it, all of these topics are interlinked as well anyway. So we're going to discuss it today, but we didn't get the opportunity due to the length of this presentation. Okay.